Last time on Delightful Travelers, we ate our way through Osaka and hopped on a bullet train and headed for Tokyo. We've heard so much about this train and let's just say it didn't disappoint. In this video, we're exploring Tokyo for the very first time. From busy crossings to serene parks, cute cats, and of course delicious food, we can't wait to show you what we get up to. I'm Trevor and this is Anna. In this series, we're checking a bucket list item off our travel list, visiting Japan. Make sure to hit subscribe and click the like button so you don't miss a single video. A huge thanks to our channel members and patrons for making these videos possible. Welcome to Tokyo. I'm on my way now. Oh my, welcome to Tokyo, everybody. There's, uh, well, a lot of people here. <laughs> yeah, we are currently crossing Shibuya, Shibuya Crossing. It is the busiest intersection in the entire world. Yeah, there's a ton of people. Like multiple intersections crisscrossing. You have to watch where you're going. Massive buildings around us. I think Tokyo is going to be a lot of fun. So believe it or not, up to 3,000 people are crossing at one time. This place is nuts. It kind of feels like the Times Square of Tokyo, but it's really just a crossing. It's hard to even imagine the sheer amount of people at this crossing. Just take a look at this and let it soak in. I've never seen so many people in one single place. I'm definitely surprised given the sheer number of people here that there's not a little bit more vehicle traffic. It's actually not that bad. I thought being in the center of Tokyo there'd be a whole lot of like traffic jams. Also, I'm very curious how many people are here like us just to like capture and experience walking across the busiest intersection and how people are actually walking with purpose and like maybe work around here and going somewhere that they need to be. For a country that we found to be quite quiet so far, honestly, even in Osaka, it was a little more quiet. Uh, here, like right where we're at right now, is a little bit of sensory overload. There's so much to look at around us, guys. We're so excited to be in Tokyo, you can probably tell. If you're excited, do us a favor, hit the like button because it helps us out. So for those of you that are just tuning in for the very first time, we actually started our Japan trip in Osaka. We filmed a couple of videos there. And then in the last episode, we were taking a bullet train here to Tokyo. And for those of you that are not new around here, thanks again for tuning in. And you might be wondering, well, you know, I should say, we've been traveling around the world looking for different places to live. And you know we like big cities. And we're kind of here on a scouting mission just to see when we eventually will come back to Asia in the future. Mm -hmm. Is Tokyo a spot where we want to like set up shop? So far, I think it could be, but we'll see how we make out over the course of the video. So when the two of us actually talk about living somewhere, we probably don't mean it in the same sense that a lot of you guys would. We don't intend really ever to live in one spot permanently and not really move around. What we'd ideally like to do is maybe be in three or four places each year. So like three or four months at a time. Maybe returning to the same place every year. We're not really sure of that yet. So what we've been doing in the past few months is living a month or two in one place and then we'll kind of jump around a little bit. That's what this here is in Japan. We're only here for like not even two weeks. So we're just kind of doing a scoping mission. If there are any Japanese watching this video and I hope there are, we do need some suggestions. If we come back here to let's say live for a while, let's say a few months, what neighborhood in Tokyo would you stay in? Yeah. Where What's would you tell us? Spot? Yeah, we'd love to know. Things we like, well, we definitely like trendy neighborhoods, <laughs> but we like neighborhoods with lots of, uh, you know, shopping, restaurants, cafes, obviously. Craft beer. Craft beer, <laughs> maybe Mexican food. Yes, Japanese food, of course. <laughs> and, and easy access to the metro system, the subway is a must. Before we get any further exploring Tokyo, we wanted to say a huge thanks to MyHeritage for partnering with us for this week's video. This is going to be a fun one. MyHeritage is a global family history and DNA service that makes exploring your family history easier than ever. MyHeritage helps you discover your origins and potentially find new family members and they also cover more regions than any other test. A few weeks ago they mailed us our DNA test to start this very easy process. It literally takes two minutes to complete the DNA test. You open the box, swab each cheek for 30 seconds, then you place both vials in the plastic bag and put it in the enclosed envelope. It takes three to four weeks to get 
your results. So in the meantime, you can start building your family tree by inputting family members. While you're waiting, they also have a fun photo feature where you can enhance, colorize, and animate old family photos. MyHeritage is also committed in its privacy policy to never sell or license genetic data, meaning you will be the sole owner of your own DNA data. Well, this is a very exciting day. Our DNA results are in. We have them right here on the computer. We haven't looked at them yet. No, I've got my results open. So 75% Irish, Scottish, and Welsh. 19.3 Scandinavian. 3.9% uh, Balkan. Balkan? Maybe I'm like Croatian. It's all very interesting to me, but what about me? What about me? Yeah, so I got his open. So you, uh, also says Irish, Scottish, Welsh, 61.7%. Uh, okay. But it breaks it down a little bit more. You got a lot of Newfoundland in there, not a surprise. 26.9% Scandinavian. Uh, do I see Italy highlighted down here? It looks like I Italy, do. you've got two point, ah, uh, there, there we go. There it is. 2.4% <laughs> Italian. So that 2.4% <laughs> clearly comes out in my complexion, in my skin there color, I believe. So let's take a look at my DNA matches. It doesn't look like I have any close family, but lots of extended family. Family. There are some cousin, parents first cousins, parents second cousins, third cousins, they're from the USA, from Canada. Oh, this is so cool. Well, that was a lot of fun and kind of unexpected results. Uh, hello, Italian? I'm gonna have to practice my Italian now. Prego, prego. Maybe we, maybe we need to go back to Italy too. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. Well, here's the question. Are you ready to find out about your heritage? So to get your very own DNA kit, use the link in the description box below and also use our coupon code DT for free shipping. A huge thanks to My Heritage for sponsoring this week's video and supporting creators like us. Well, it doesn't take long to get out of the chaos and into a beautiful park. Now, I have to point this out before we even get into this park. There's a bunch of bicycles next to us, and they are not locked. I mean, there's no locks at all. I could just grab one now if I wanted to. Of course, I'm not going to do that, but this is one thing about Japan we keep noticing. Everywhere in Osaka and everywhere in Tokyo, whenever we see bicycles, they are not locked. Can you guys see how many bikes are here? And you know how many people are in this city? Well, we're gonna talk about that. The population of Tokyo is actually almost 14 million in the city proper, and about 37 million in the entire city. It's actually the most populated city in the entire world. Is that not crazy? That's like 37 wild. million people is the actual population of Canada. I know, I think we mentioned this in the last video, but I'm still shocked at the sheer amount of people in this city. It's crazy. <laughs> but we didn't say the name of the park. It's called Yoji Park. Uh, it looks pretty big and I think, it's pretty big. I think there's some things we can do yeah, in here. Yeah, where do we think we are? <laughs> so we are here actually during Sakura season. That actually means cherry blossoms here in Japan. In Tokyo, they seem to be coming to an end. This is the first week of April, so we thought they might be a little bit more in bloom. In Osaka, they were just full on out. It was perfect. Here we seem to be a little bit past due because right here we are absolutely like surrounded by cherry trees and you can see the blossoms are pretty much at the end. Yeah, they're turning uh, turning colors. I don't yeah, think... Yeah, falling. Yeah, you guys, it's probably hard to tell on the camera, but mm -hmm. it's still why everybody is here. Look at that blue tarps as well. That's interesting, huh? I know, everybody seems to have a blue tarp that they're having a picnic on. Yeah, why, is, why don't they have blankets? Like, why know, do they have weird. blue tarps? I don't know. <laughs> How pretty is this park, huh? I know, I love this park. After being out there in the chaos, you guys just saw it. You can come in here and it's like quiet and serene. <laughs> it's hard to believe that that crazy intersection was only like a 15 minute walk away. Yeah, it's really, really close. <laughs> and then you come here, you have this beautiful pond, a water feature, just all these people relaxing. I know, and look at the trees behind Anna. Like, it looks so cool. It's like a little groomed forest or yeah, something is, like that. Yeah. <laughs> so we already mentioned living in this city, living in Tokyo, and I'll tell you, it's green spaces just like this that really makes us want to be in a city. It does, <laughs> especially when you're in a city this big, or even a small city, it's so important to have these, these green spaces that you can just escape to, that you can go have fun. I can just totally picture a beautiful sunny summer day coming here with oh, my... Yeah blanket or blue tarp as it might be and having a picnic and just hanging out here all day. So far like uh, our time here in Japan has mainly been in Osaka and here in Tokyo mm -hmm. and they can do parks. I mean you guys, you Japanese people know how to do amazing green spaces and when yeah. we find a city that has everything like this and spaces, outdoor spaces like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't think Perfection. I knew that really about about Tokyo. I mean, the no. stuff that you, you normally see is like, is the crossing, you know, you see pictures of that and the crazy lights and just the chaos. But there is this other side to it, which is yeah. nice. And we travel quite a bit and it's not too often you come across big cities like this that, that do green spaces really, well. really, really well. When we do, it always attracts us 
to the city. Another place that did that was Bangkok. Bangkok is really yeah, great at that. Yeah, it's a great park. Again, too. like massive city, right? Mm -hmm. So, so far, Tokyo, <laughs> we're loving it. Next up, we have come over to a cat cafe. Yeah, that's right. It's a cafe, and there are cats. We bought a little treat, and you can see they're very <laughs> excited. I got a cat ice cream. <laughs> so you can actually purchase this. Look, they're coming over. Oh my god, this is so adorable. Maybe hold it a little lower, because they can all get it. <laughs> wow. Popular. Oh, there we go. So we actually tried to go to a different cafe and there was a huge lineup to get in and I'm kind of glad we didn't go anyway because I would have felt kind of bad, like just too many people and I didn't see what it looks like inside but I'm sure it's a little overwhelming for the cats and that many people. Here it's just us and one other person at the moment. It's nice and quiet, there's places for the cats to lounge. But I don't feel like bad about it basically. It's a really neat space as well. As soon as you come in, these little guys hear the door and they come running over like, look at this guy. How cute are you? Hey buddy. Apparently, this one does not like ice cream and is making lots of friends still. Mm -hmm. Really, it's this one, huh? This one's super into it. I think it's like a Siamese. It's like super awesome. Hi, Siamese. Look, they're all being very nice. <laughs> oh my god, they like the ice cream. They really like the ice cream. This one must not like ice cream either. Look at this, just lounging in the window, watching the world go by. You're the cat whisperer oh, over yeah, here. It's not me, I wish it was. I'm pretty sure it's the ice cream. I wonder what kind of ice cream it is. It doesn't smell that great, so. <laughs> so these cat cafes are all over Japan, especially here in Tokyo. And we were just saying like, I wonder if they originated here. Of course, there's lots all around the world now, but in this city, there seems to be an abundance of them and the, cat, the cats. Anna hasn't moved since we got in here. She's been sitting in the same spot and these cats have really taken to her. Well, they've taken to the ice cream. That was so much fun. Honestly, you can't hang out with cats unless you're not a cat fan and not have a really, really great time. They were so cute. Not, not the most cuddly, but that's totally fine. They're around people all the time, but they were, they were fun to hang out with. But we're back in our neighborhood that we are staying at. We're really happy that we picked this area. It's called Akasaka. Akasaka, I yeah. believe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really quiet, that's the main thing. Huh? It is really quiet, there's not a whole lot of traffic. In the evening time it seems to get a little bit busier with lots of pedestrians, and there's lots of restaurants and stuff around too. Yeah, that's the thing about this place, is it has all the restaurants, cafes, you find all the, the 7-Elevens and family and marts. Cats. cats, craft beer places, there's even pizza if you want that, tons of Japanese restaurants of course, so yeah we're kind of shocked how like chill it is. It's super chill and we did show you our hotel in the last video so if you're mm -hmm. curious about that go back and watch. Yeah if I were you guys and you, you're watching this video to maybe plan your future trip to come to Tokyo, I'd consider this area, it's just really easy to get to other areas in the city like we were just were at. You guys, all this walking around has got us hungry and I see some sushi. I mean, this is plastic sushi. <laughs> How cool is that? Like, it's plastic sushi on display. I assume you, you're gonna get the real stuff inside and they just replicated it in plastic. Anyway, I'm talking too much. We're hungry, that's the point. Let's go eat. Before we try this glorious looking sushi, we did get some drinks, so we should tell you about those first. So I just got a, a beer. It is a Kirin and it's a basic beer here. I don't think it's anything too special, but I'll try it quickly. <laughs> Yeah, easy drinking, pale ale, pretty common in other countries as well. Nothing to write home about. Wish it was a craft beer. Yeah. Yours is more colorful. Yeah, mine's a little bit more fun. Something I have not tried yet. It's a Japanese spirit called Shoshu. It's really, I think it's called. really red. Look at how red that is, you guys. Yeah, so we got it with strawberries inside of it. <laughs> now I'm curious how sweet this is. Ooh, ooh, that is so good. You would actually never know that there's alcohol in there. It just tastes straight up like strawberries. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> So, the sushi we got. We are very excited to try it out. I got a spicy tuna roll. Uh, this thing looks great, although it's covered in those, um, what are these called? Bonito. Bonito, which I know is very common here in Japan. I'm just never a fan of it, because it always smells super, super fishy. I have uh, some wasabi and uh, soy sauce down here that you can't see at the moment. But the only thing is, this is big. I don't know how I'm gonna- They're huge rolls. Like, I can't eat that in one bite, and I don't have a plate, so. We're about to make a mess here. See if I can get to the, the fish. Hopefully it's good. Mm. Oh, it's delicious. Look at that fish. 
It's so, so fresh, you guys. And there's little bits, I think, of cucumber in there. There's just tons and tons of rice. I don't really taste the bonita, which I'm not a fan of, but uh, maybe that's because of all the wasabi. But this is delicious. <laughs> it's everything I hoped sushi would be in Japan. So they do actually have some vegetarian sushi options on their menu, which is great. I went for an avocado and veggie roll. It's also uh, wrapped in rice rather than having the seaweed on the outside. Not a huge seaweed fan, so we're going to see how this goes. <laughs> At home in Canada, you can often get it wrapped in like rice paper or yeah. soy paper, which I always enjoy more, but we'll see how this goes. So we have avocado on the top, and in the middle, I think you see like cucumber and a whole bunch of other things. Again, like Trevor's roll, it's massive. I have no idea how to do this without making a giant mess. I'm just staring at all this sushi in awe. <laughs> I can't hold it up because it's literally falling apart. I don't know how people take one big, one big bite of these and manage to eat it all in one. I could never do that. My mouth is just not big enough for that. But it was really, really delicious. Such fresh flavors. I did not notice the seaweed at all, which is always a winner when it comes to sushi for me. Anyway, just all these wonderful, wonderful flavors mixed together. Next up, I thought I'd be a little bit adventurous. I got some nigiri, but this is red, uh, red snapper nigiri. Never had this before. You can actually see some of the scales there. I don't know if you guys can see that. And it's like a white fish. It never smells fishy. Why would it in Japan? So I'm gonna dip it back in uh, some of this wasabi, and uh, I guess go for it one bite. Soy sauce and wasabi. Mmm, soy sauce and wasabi. <laughs> oh man. It's also so, so, so fresh. I have to say, I'm really into Nigiri lately. Usually, I kind of stick to what I know, and it's usually like a maki uh, sushi roll, but lately, I've been kind of getting into that a little bit. Now, I'm trying new fish. I, I don't eat a lot of shellfish, but it does make me go, like, maybe I should try some Nigiri with, you know, shrimp or something, eel at some point. Maybe I'll do it. It's not going to be today, but so glad we popped in here. I know. We haven't eaten nearly enough sushi here. No, we haven't. Been in Japan. And all this walking around today already has made us really hungry, and this was worth it. From delicious food to one of our favorite drinks, we have come over to a craft beer place here in the same neighborhood we've been in, same neighborhood we're staying in. This place is called Carbon Brews. It was a little bit hard to find. You had to kind of go down an alley and like down some stairs, but we did find it. Got here just as they were opening at 5.30 p.m. There's no one here at the moment. I bet you it'll get quite a bit busier a little later on, but we did find some craft beer. There seems to be a lot of craft beer here in Japan, but one thing I will warn you about, it's very, very expensive. The beer we got here is a dry hopped uh, lager, so let's just try it out quickly. It's very good, but you can probably see the price on the screen here. Yeah, it's that expensive, you guys. It's wildly expensive to us, so we won't be having too many of these, but someone has to tell us, why is craft beer so so expensive taxes. in Japan. Oh, and it's saying taxes. So is that the only reason? That's crazy. This is probably the most expensive craft beer we've come across. It's more expensive than Canada, and that's that's saying something. But to put it into perspective for a second, these two beers that we're <laughs> drinking right now cost uh, about the same price as our accommodation for one night in Vietnam. Yeah, let that sink in. I'm drinking my accommodation right now. So going back to like, could we or would we want to live here in Tokyo? Because it is such an appealing city. It has a lot of draws for us, but one of the huge drawbacks is definitely the price. We would have to be so, so careful about eating out, drinking. We couldn't, definitely couldn't do this every day. We'd have to be really, really careful about that. The thing is we could come here and spend 90 days visa free, but it's not like we, as being digital nomads, we wouldn't make more money being here in Japan. So we just have to be, really conscious about what we're spending our money on. So part of the appeal about Tokyo is if you come to the city, as a Japanese person, let's say, you can make more money. The potential is there. But for us as digital nomads, the potential's not there because we're not about to get a full-time job here, get hired by a company here, let's say, in Tokyo. So for us, when a city's really expensive, it's, it's a bit of a negative when we can go, let's say, to Bangkok for a lot cheaper or even Ho Chi Minh City, Saigon for, well, God, like a quarter of the price and have all the same amenities. So it's all stuff we have to think about when we're kind of traveling around the world, trying to figure out places where we want to set up shop. But 
If we take the price out of it for a second, if there's anything that we do know, it's that we love this city and we love Japan. One of the huge positives about a city like this is the airports. They actually have two major international airports like right here in the city, which is great because it means they have flights that go probably literally almost anywhere you'd want to go. It means getting home to Canada. Well, it's still pretty far, especially because we're from the East Coast, not the closer West Coast, which is not that far from Japan, far enough, but we have to get to the other side. But in general, it just means that we can get lots of different places. We were here for a few months and wanted to take some vacations. We could do that. Mm, I like I like what you're saying, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I didn't ask you, do you like this beer? Yeah, so I don't know if we said what <laughs> this is. This is a dry hop lager. Yeah, I said it, but uh, what I like is this is like a different little like, kind of goblet style. I love these little glasses. <laughs> They're always fun to drink out of. All right, you can see it's a little later now. It's uh, nighttime and it's all lit up this area is beautiful still pretty chill not a lot of people around no it's not i feel like last night was even busier maybe it's just the street we're on right now but like <laughs> again not very much traffic just like a little pedestrian traffic it's nice ah we love it there's lots of places to eat <laughs> as well that's what we're about to go do but now we're gonna kind of wrap up the video and honestly tokyo like first impressions this has been awesome it had a really great day did a lot of walking i think we got a lot of steps in today <laughs> close to twenty thousand. so much 000. ground to cover obviously and yeah. it's a huge uh, you know biggest city by population so a huge huge city so there are a million things you could do here yeah that's the thing if you're coming over for a week vacation uh don't try to do it all you're never gonna <laughs> do everything in this city it, you could just come to tokyo alone for like a year <laughs> on, <laughs> honestly so but stop you're gonna stop here no matter what it's such a great place could we live here I think we could, but I don't know because of the price. Yeah, we'd have to be super budget conscious if we were here. We'd probably yeah. have to cook at home a lot. Cook at home a lot, but that's the hard part because all the good foods outside, all the ramen, all the sushi, yeah. like everything we love in life. Yeah. <laughs> so but I do have to say that every day that goes by here in Japan, I like it a little bit more. Yeah. At first it's a little overwhelming and there's so much stuff to take in. Yeah. I, not that I didn't enjoy it at first, but like every day I settle in a little bit more. I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a little harder to step into uh, if you're coming to Asia for the first time it's harder to step into than you think but it doesn't take long to really <laughs> kind of adjust, adjust yeah. and get your groove but we will have a couple more videos at least one mm -hmm. maybe two videos coming up here we leave in a few days so we're trying to cram no. in a bunch of filming uh, so, so we'll much see. filming to do in so little time <laughs> if you got this far it's Trevor Anna delightful travelers hit subscribe leave us a comment hit the like button because that's what helps us out the most mm -hmm. and now we'll go eat and we'll see you guys in the next video where we'll probably be eating some more yeah, I think we'll be eating more <laughs> next week. Oh, we're just going to keep eating and eating and eating and eating. All right, guys, that's it. From Tokyo, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.